We got a pretty big update from Zapier. We can now start integrating apps within the Microsoft 365 system. Now, this is a pretty big deal as up to this point, I've made a playlist dedicated to artificial intelligence and automation. It's over like 80 videos long. And a lot of the times I couldn't use or integrate the Microsoft 365 system because it wasn't available, such as Outlook or Excel. So a lot of these videos, I would always use the Google ecosystem, Google Docs, Google Gmail, Google Sheets. So in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and integrate the Microsoft 365 system into our Zapier profile. And on top of that, let's go ahead and automatically create an email with artificial intelligence and automation. Welcome back y'all. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up a real quick automation in order to automatically create an AI generated email for Outlook. This is a big deal. As up to this point, I've always shown Gmail. So it's time to show some other ecosystems. So first off, let's go ahead and just integrate Microsoft 365. One thing I wanna point out before I integrate Microsoft Outlook is it doesn't seem like it has Word yet, but it does have Outlook, Excel, Teams, OneNote. So a lot of their 365 system within Zapier's automation to integrate seamlessly, but it doesn't have Word yet. So maybe request that, but let's go ahead and integrate Microsoft Outlook. I'm just gonna come up here and type in Outlook. Here we go, we're gonna hit connect. We're gonna go ahead and hit accept. And perfect, we can go ahead and start doing automations within our Zapier profile. Let's go and create a new Zap. I'm gonna come over here to create new Zap. Once we're in our new Zap here, let's go ahead and name it to AI email Outlook. Enter here and let's just start off here. Today's video is purely just to show you the integration of Zapier with Outlook. On top of that, you're gonna learn a little bit about prompting when it comes to chat GBT. On top of that, I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here that is over 80 videos long that shows you a ton of stuff. Now, if you want a really comprehensive video when it comes to how to handle your customer service with AI and specifically emails and receiving emails and automatically responding to emails, because no one likes to do that. Maybe you want to drink your coffee and listen to the, a podcast. Check out that video right there. It'll show you how to automatically set up different flows to respond to emails. That video is on Gmail, but now you can integrate it with Outlook. Because of our use case today, we're just going to set up a trigger of scheduler. This is the kind of trigger I like to use when I'm just messing around. You know, maybe you want to do like some manual work through schedule by Zapier. If you don't know what scheduler is, basically this will incur the automation on a certain time increment. So we can do every hour, every day. For our use case, we'll just do every day. Continue. Time of the day, we'll go ahead and choose 12.45 a.m. <laughs> Test trigger here. And this is just a dummy trigger. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with our action. Now, before we even go ahead and prompt our chat GPT block, I'm actually curious on what Outlook can do on a service level here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Microsoft Outlook. And let's go ahead and see its different events. Okay, so we got create contact, create draft email, event, send email. All right, pretty standard stuff here, y'all. For the most part, this is pretty up to par with what we could do with Gmail's integration. But here is one really, really, really big caveat compared to the two. It seems like within Gmail, in order to access it at an API level, e.g. allowing me to create a draft email through automations, from Microsoft, it's free. It's just part of your account. But with Gmail, it does cost you to have a business email, e.g. a workspace account that costs around, I believe last time I checked, $7 a month. So in order to do the type of automations you see in my tutorials, when it comes to Gmail, you do need to pay $7 a month, but it looks like with Microsoft Outlook, that's just part of the free plan. So having access to Microsoft Outlook, just a regular email, you'll be able to set up automations. Today's video, we're gonna create a draft email but before we create that draft email, let's go ahead and set up our ChatGPT. Corbin, I don't know how to integrate ChatGPT. What is Chat? G okay, you probably know what ChatGPT is. At least you've heard it on the news. If you want to learn how to integrate it and you want a really in-depth video, I encourage you to check out that video right there. It's over 40 minutes long. It's one of my more popular videos on this channel. I think it's like over 60,000 views at this point, maybe 50,000. There's also another video prequel to that to learn more about AI itself. So check out that video if you want to learn. We're going to go ahead and create a conversation. We're going to invent a conversation. Continue. Make sure to connect your ChatGPT account, or in this context, OpenAI. I have noticed that if you do have an active working ChatGPT connection, sometimes it'll ask you to sign in. That just seems like a glitch. So just go back to your apps, hit reconnect or test action, and you can go ahead and see it'll prompt up here. And just to show you what I mean, basically, if sometimes it says sign in, but you're like, I connected this already. What's going on? Is this like, did I not connect it? Come back over here, simply click these three ellipses and hit reconnect, or sorry, not reconnect, test connection. When you get that response of test successful, it will show up in your automation. So we're gonna go ahead and choose our account here. I'm gonna just do this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and hit action. And let's start filling out some information here. Ignore the messages. Okay, here's the most important part when you make a ChatGPT block in Zapier. I've done a lot of videos on this as well. Is the user message, the model, and memory key. Everything else, it adds a little bit of nuance, a little bit of differentiation in the output, 
we don't have to care about as much. So let's go ahead and create a user message here where we're going to go ahead and create the subject line of our email. When creating user messages, what's great about this is that we can actually add previous data blocks so that the actual output's more lasered in on our specific automation. So in this context, it doesn't really make sense, but let me just show you an example. We're going to say context. We are generating a subject line for an email that will be sent out. And just to show you what I mean by putting in previous data, we're going to put the pretty date of April 8th. This could be other stuff. This could be information you got from a PDF, information from an email you received, as you'll see in those tutorials that I referenced earlier. For now, we're going to do that. I'm going to say generating, we are generating a subject for an email about our new dog product, Chewy Bone. Very creative name, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say format, max of eight words, include date. We can do plenty more here. We can do plenty less here. When we choose our model, typically what I like to do is when using 3.5, this is going to be for data formatting, data reformatting, finding specific data points as we jump into a lot. But in this context, when a actual person is going to read it, we could stay with 3.5, but I like erring on the side of 4 if a human is going to read it. Coming over here, we can go ahead and do GPT-4 Turbo Preview. For our memory key, this is ensures consistent output. So if you like how an output looks like when coming into a chat GPT block, you're going to want a memory key. This can be a random string of 32 characters, or it can be really nice like emo sub, jict. But just to prove it to you, random string of 32 characters, we're going to hit continue here and test this action. Notice within our subject line, we get our date, which is referenced in our previous block here. In addition, it followed our formatting rules where we wanted less than eight words. So we're not getting like 20 words in the subject line. But what you'll notice is that within the subject line, we get quotation marks. So there's two ways we can remove this. The first way is we could, in theory, add it to the prompt in order to ensure that it doesn't use quotation marks in the actual email subject. The second way, which I like to use, is more of a code heavy way. But with Zapier, it's a no code way. So that probably didn't make sense. <laughs> but basically, what it's doing is it's making the changes with code. But for us, it's just drag and drop right here, right? So we don't like the quotation marks, as we don't want quotation marks in the email. And if you do, leave them there. We can go ahead and use a formatter tool by Zapier. This allows us to manipulate the data and do stuff with the data. So we're going to go ahead and do format, formatter by Zapier. This used to cost us Zap usage, but now, as of recently, I think within the last one or two months, this lo no longer costs us anything. This is completely free to use in our automation flow, so no expenditure is done. We do transform here. We're going to do replace. There's a ton of other stuff we can do here. And on my channel, we go over the other stuff. We do replace here. We're going to do the input of this conversation, which will be the reply. And then we are going to find what we don't want. So we're going to replace it, right? So we're going to find the quotation marks. I don't like the quotation marks. And we're going to replace it with nothing. So we're going to continue here, test step, and we're going to get our nice subject line with no quotation marks. Boom. First step done. Now we need a sub or a body. To get a body, we're going to go ahead and to make my life easy, I'm going to simply just click these three ellipses, hit duplicate. Now that we have duplicated the block, we can go ahead and drag it. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. Also, you'll notice add air handling. This was a, I made a video on this. It actually didn't get a lot of views. Like basically no one saw it. So if you want to see how to add a air handling. So when an automation airs out for whatever the may, reason may be, especially in the context of AI, you can check it out right there. We show different ways to circumnavigate that. But I'm going to go ahead and copy this, bring it down here as this is the next step in the automation flow. And we can go ahead and rename this to, you know, like this, like a uh, body email. I know y'all, I can't see it either. So body or bad e email. And it has most of it filled out. It will have most of the stuff we put in previously filled out, which is nice. I'm going to go ahead and say this. This is the subject line to our email. Semicolon, parentheses, previous output, but not the conversation, the formatted one. Generate an email body that says we will have a 10% coupon called uh, Chewy10. Maybe I should do a dog company. Uh, and then we're going to do format here max of four sentences and let's go ahead and see this output actually i'm gonna, I'm gonna purposely mess up this output it's max of four sentences include apples and bananas something that's just going to throw off this output let's just say we were just messing up and we have our memory key here we want to switch it so we're going to go ahead and just do this hit continue here and test this step so we get our email body here what you'll notice is a couple things well first off this is actually good this happened so it has a subject line we don't want that obviously and then it should, yeah, let me say loves apples and bananas. This is a bad output. I don't like this. How do I fix it? Come back to action here. 
we're just going to add a one to our memory key. It's going to completely refresh it. Think of it like starting a new chat within chat GPT. Fresh, fresh slate. Does it remember previous outputs? And on top of that, it's going to fix some of this stuff. So max of four sentences. Do not just output the body of the email. No text before or after. We'll try this. Boom. So we're going to continue back here. Retest this step. There you go. So now before it was a subject line and there was like a little outro there with a variable point. We don't want that. Now we just got the subject line or now we just got the body. Now that we have both, we can go ahead and proceed. So we're going to go ahead and have a Microsoft Outlook, uh, Outlook email. Hit event here, create draft. Actions, we're already connected. Two emails. We're going to go ahead and send it to ourselves. Contact at WebCafe AI. We're going to add our subject line here, which is going to be the first formatted block here. Introducing Chewy Bone. Let's go ahead and add our body. Body is right here. Since there was no formatting necessary, there was no quotation marks, we can just do the reply. Our body format is a choice between text and HTML. I'm gonna choose text for now. I've gone over in other videos how to deal with HTML to make it look a little bit better in the context of sending it. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue here and let's test this step. And there we go. Got our subject line, got our body. On top of that, if you wanted to maybe add more fixed text. So for example, maybe every single email you outro it like best regards XYZ or ZYX or XUZ. You can add that and that will always be in every single email or create draft you do. So it'll just automatically be there. You don't have to write out your own signature. And that's pretty solid. Now that we have the ability to integrate the Microsoft 365 system within Zapier, I encourage you to check out the playlist at the end here, which is over 80 videos long. It goes over a lot of stuff when it comes to the Google ecosystem with Google Docs, Excel, Gmail, or Google Sheets. And basically now with those videos, you can basically do the Microsoft version now. Make sure you leave a like, it's completely free. I do a ton of other stuff when it comes to AI on this channel. On top of that, we go over just this new market that's emerging, which is artificial intelligence and software and how to get involved with it. I'll see you in the next video. That's the playlist I was referring to. This is one of my first playlists on this channel. It's over a year and a half long, 80 videos, really good stuff in there. I think if you are like, how do I do this in Zapier? High probability you'll be in this channel. I've been all over this platform. So you'll learn a ton of stuff when it comes to AI. And automation that's a random video that's my face i'll see you in the next video